Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank, and this is a build review. So I know what you're thinking. Where's Groot's arm? That's not Stormbreaker. A lot of people have been saying this to me since I've been posting this on my Instagram, and I get that. It's a little confusing, especially if you only follow the MCU, and you've really only seen the movie Infinity War and Endgame. Well, this is, but it isn't Stormbreaker. And what I mean by Asgardian Stormbreaker is, this is actually based on the concept art for Infinity War. Before Infinity War was released, there were prologues and comic books released of what Stormbreaker was kind of supposed to look like, and it didn't have Groot's arm. And if, you're if you follow the comics, you know Stormbreaker looks nothing like this. It has to do with Beta Ray Bill, and that's a whole other story aside from the point. I was never really a big fan of that whole Groot arm thing, but you have to remember what happens in the movie. They're trying to cast Stormbreaker out of that Uru metal, but then the mold fails. For some reason, E-Tree doesn't have enough metal. I think it's because Thor didn't hold the thing open long enough. Anyway, the, the mold didn't finish. They needed a handle. That's when E-Tree starts freaking out, running around, oh my god, and Groot uses his arm to finish Stormbreaker, or put a band-aid on it. So when you kind of look at it and say, that's not Stormbreaker, it kind of is. This is potentially what Stormbreaker should have looked like if the mold had finished. There was a much bigger backstory to the whole Groot arm and you know, the, the whole uh, hero act he did for that. I, and I understand that. So if that's the Stormbreaker you like, that's fine. I was personally not really a big fan of that. But then I saw this model by a, a seller on Etsy. I'll link it down below, of course, so you guys can go and buy this. This thing is beautiful, and he in includes the whole Groot arm that you can 3D print as well, which is just, it's beautiful. This has to be one of the most movie accurate Stormbreakers, Groot arm or not, that's actually just available out there. So I saw this and I'm like, that's, that's awesome. Like, look at this thing. Like, this is, <laughs> I wanted, I wanted Stormbreaker, but I just, I didn't like the Groot arm. And seeing this, being able to make something that's just like this unique, I, I wanted, I wanted this so bad. Now, I can't film and record everything I make. Uh, they're just, the logistically, there wouldn't be time. And if you've ever recorded yourself building something, filming something, it, it can take a half hour job and a half hour build and stretch it out to four or five plus hours. So I can't really record anything. What I think I'm pretty good at doing is explaining what I did and how I arrived from A, B, and all the way to Z. So while I wasn't able to film the whole process of making this thing, I can at least explain to you guys a little bit better what I did, how I assembled it, how I printed it and painted it, and hopefully it can kind of help you guys in the end. So let me get this thing taken apart, we'll get it on the desk, we'll start looking at it, and we'll slowly build it up, and I'll explain to you everything that went into actually making this Asgardian Stormbreaker. So this is what makes up Stormbreaker right here. It was fully 3D printed in a couple of different parts, and actually screwed together with a metal rod, and that was actually a little uh, design feature that the modeler had incorporated into the file itself. You can see here we actually have the hammer core. This impact disc right here at the bottom was printed separately and I it was just added at the end after it was painted. I printed it standing just up like this and it used pretty minimal supports except for down here and I should have paid more attention to this and actually I was trying to save material when I printed it because when I had it flipped the other way it built up material all the way here. Unfortunately though, when I went to remove the supports, a lot of it broke away and that's just my own fault, the way I was removing my supports. So I had to refill in all this and fix it. I was hoping it would give it more of like a hammered forge kind of effect, but I'm really not that happy with it and I'm probably gonna go back and fix this. So those are two pieces right there. And then this little gold plate at the bottom was printed separately pretty easily and then it was fused to the bottom just to make it easier to assemble and disassemble. The axe core was printed in a very similar fashion standing straight up like that. And again, this whole gold plate down here was printed separately and attached. And when I assemble it later, it'll make a lot more sense on why I actually fuse these together. And if you guys wanna go follow this guy's Instagram, he actually has his plug and handle right here. You can follow him there, he has a Zetsi shop, and just his models are absolutely beautiful. This thing is just incredible. So it's actually kind of cool he uh, labeled his stuff in here. This was printed basically standing up just like that. And I think the only support material I needed was just a little bit in here and a little bit back here. Now, right off the bat, you can tell that these are actually two pretty big pieces. I have some slightly bigger printers and I didn't actually need to cut these up. I wouldn't recommend printing this on something like an Ender 3, but again, if that's all you have, you definitely can. You'll probably have to bisect this like this, or at least cut off the tips of the blade. This actually can fit on an Ender as long as you uh, really max out your height and you're brave enough. This is another little part that actually helps lock the blade and the hammerhead together. 
And as I was saying before, it utilizes a metal rod system. And the designer had initially made it to where you could just put metal uh, pegs or dowels inside of it. But I capitalized on that and actually threaded metal rod all the way through the entire ax. So this goes completely through this entire structure and then actually screws on to the handle and there's another metal rod going all the way through. Now, you can actually see right here, there's indents and holes. And what these are, instead of putting metal rods or dowels through that, I actually sank magnets into these. This way when it's actually time for me to go and assemble the ax, it locks together. So that's now in position with simple neodymium magnets. And the whole way this locks together, this is the, the, the final locking feature. Once everything's assembled, this gets dropped into place. And right here and right there, lock the ax head and the hammer head together so they don't actually fall out from each other. And they work in conjunction with this sitting on top of itself like that. So this all gets locked together very nicely. And the reason I used magnets was because I want to be able to disassemble this for travel and I move around a lot. So shipping this in one piece just really wouldn't be the best thing in the world. And if it broke, I'd be very, very upset. The handle again was printed same way as before. One little piece. Again, I have some tall printers, one tall piece. This will actually fit on a Creality CR-10S. I had no problem printing this. It's really tall. I had, a pr I had the print stop at 95% and get knocked off during a live stream. Some of you might even remember that. I just printed the rest of it, glued it on, and fused it together. This little part also failed, so I printed the rest, fused it together. Not my best fuse job, but I think it kind of lends to the little bit of rustic look this thing has. And then the bottom of the, the blade. Unfortunately, the hole on this got a little blown out when I was putting the threads through it. So I have just a little bit of tape there to kind of help lock the threads into place and it's good to go. Now the thre the holes weren't threaded before I started. However, PLA plastic is soft enough where if you put a little bit of force into it, you can actually just thread the rod right through. And I believe this is an eight millimeter threaded rod and it goes to about here. And then this one comes up to about meets it in the middle, so on and so forth. So there's metal rod through this entire thing. And it's nice because it actually gives it just a little bit of weight and it feels much more rigid. I wouldn't, even if this was 100% infill, I still probably wouldn't trust this to hold up the, the weight of the hammerhead. After printing it, I did pretty much what any you know model or prop maker would do. I started to sand and prime everything. I don't use filler primer. Sandable primer is just a little bit different. It builds up in a different way and it sands away a lot easier actually. So I actually, uh, after sanding the entire print, I soaked it with this. Sanded it all down, got it as smooth as I could. Right off the bat, if you guys haven't already noticed, there are some layer lines still showing. It's not my best work and I'm probably gonna go back and redo it one day and I I'll acknowledge that. What actually happened with this hammerhead here though, is while I was testing out my CR-10 Max, I had sliced some G-code with my four millimeter nozzle. However, I was experimenting with what my slice times would look like with my eight millimeter nozzle. However, when I put this on my Max, I never changed it back from my eight millimeter nozzle and I sliced the G-code. However, there's still a four millimeter nozzle on my CR-10 Max. Unfortunately, this caused some weird under extrusions. I lost a lot of detail. There's a clear under extrusion line going through the middle. And that actually lended to the fact that this wasn't that strong of a print and when my supports broke off. So that was 100% my fault. What's cool though is it actually still came out and I was able to save a lot of the details on it, like these runes in here and some of the lettering with a real crafty little modeler's trick. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen something like this, but this is a plastic panel scriber used in really just any type of model making. And basically it's a little claw right there and what it's meant to do is, I'm actually gonna do this on my desk because I really don't care. It's actually meant to grab and pull plastic out from details and holes. Now, what can you do with something like this? Well, for instance, if I had something like this with all these little detailed runes and I wanted to clean this up after painting, you can actually see that there's no paint in these lines or holes. All you do is you take your little plastic panel scriber and you pull it along those holes and what it's gonna do, it's gonna clean out all that detail and gunk and you can do this as many times as you want it'll make the, the line a lot deeper and it'll bring back that detail this is actually what i did on my entire mark 85 suit here how i was able to save a lot of the detail especially after sanding you can see a lot of it showing up through here even after it was, it was painted sanded taped it helped me pull out a lot of the lines that were kind of lost with the whole you know build up material and process and it really can just absolutely make this black detail pop it looks like these are separate parts now because I was able to pull the paint back out, but this is all one part. I wanted it to look like multiple 
layers and areas stacked on top of each other. And that's what something like this can do. So if you want something like this, definitely go and buy it. It comes with replacement blades, but I've been using the same blade for probably about six years now and never had a problem. However, if you don't want to add another tool to your arsenal, you can do the exact same thing with an X-Acto knife, just the back side of it. It's, it's not as accurate, but it's, it'll still do the same effect and it'll give you a nice wide line to mess with. You can even go a step farther and if you want to cut plastic in half, you can do that. What you, all you'd have to do is pull the line bit by bit by bit and eventually you're going to cut through the plastic completely and just like snapping plexiglass, you can actually snap the part in half if you want to, you know, shave a bit some sides off. It's really great for uh, props and armor making if you want to, you know, trim some excess off. So when I was done priming, I needed to pick my colors. Now, if you go and look at the concept art for the Stormbreaker, you'll notice that there's no gold on it. I wanted to go off of a line that Itri said in Infinity War when he was talking to Thor about Stormbreaker itself. He said this was supposed to be a king's weapon. And so I imagined it, if this was a complete Stormbreaker, this would be meant for someone like Odin. This would be meant for a king of Asgard. So it's gonna be ornate. It's gonna have a lot of gold. It's gonna be flashy. So that's what I wanted to go for. So I altered the original color scheme that even was rendered in the, uh, the modeler's design and I kind of wanted to put my own spin and twist on it. And honestly, I'm very happy I did that. This thing just looks awesome sitting on the wall. It's unique. There isn't another one like this in the world and I'm pretty proud of that. Now again, I'm not the happiest with the paint job. I had some failures. I could have taken more time on it and I'm gonna go back and clean it up. But I think it kind of helps add to the metallic effect of this. I think parts of it do look metal until you go and pick it up and you realize it's just plastic. These are the paints I used, a Rust-Oleum Metallic Gold, another uh, Krylon Metallic, and then this label's really messed up, but uh, it's Krylon Color, Color Max and it's Oil Rubbed Bronze. And this color, I, I use it on a lot of stuff. I love it. It's just a, like a black kind of bronze and it gives a really, really nice effect that uh, it just, it looks great and I think it looks almost like a dirty metal. So I use that for the handles and I actually sprayed a little bit on a Q-tip and I actually used that to kind of paint these extra little details here and it blended and kind of fused with the silver that was on the blade. And I think it actually gave it a, a nice effect. Now you can tell that this isn't like a nice metallic chrome and I could have spent time and gotten this shiny, but even Stormbreaker in the movies isn't this, you know, really shiny, super reflective, you know, chrome metallic it, it's never looked like that so i actually kind of want to go go for more for like a forged look that's fresh out of a cast or a mold and yeah you're really only going to sharpen the end you're not going to really polish you know a hammer i did have somebody comment on something on on reddit that i actually put chipping and battle damage at the end of this axe and he had a little bit of quarrel with that saying Uru wouldn't take battle damage. It's an as chanted as guardian weapon. It's indestructible. You're adding details that would never be there. First of all, it's a prop and I can do whatever I want with it. That's kind of, you know, artistic freedom. Second, if you actually read up on Uru, it's enchanted and it's very, very durable, but it is not indestructible. If it was indestructible, Hela wouldn't have been able to, you know, obliterate Mjolnir with her bare hands, whether it used to be her hammer or not. This is just what I wanted to go with because I think it adds to the, the fact that this looks used. I wanted it to look like a used, worn, hammered prop. I'm still gonna go over this and probably oil wash it and get it a little darker and deeper, but for now, I'm happy with it. Uru isn't the strongest metal in the universe. It's not the most powerful thing in the universe. Even the Infinity Stones were destroyed. So I think after years and years and years of battle, especially somebody maybe like a king, even a weapon like this is gonna start to take damage. I went with it, I'm happy with it, and to each his own. So I wanna show you guys how this thing goes together, just so you can really appreciate the design that the modeler took and the care he took into actually like assembling this thing. So like I said before, this is all screwed together and this is a very long rod going through up here so I don't wanna unscrew all of it because it's gonna take me forever to absolutely get it all out. So just imagine that I threaded all of this in and you know, it goes in and it locks actually pretty nicely. I don't wanna over tighten it because I don't wanna break any plastic. And then I can go up here and do the same thing. And this metal rod goes clear through this part. I made sure that the smaller, skinnier parts had plenty of threaded rod going through them because I didn't want them to break at all. I will be devastated if this thing ever breaks. Again, the threads in here got blown out. I'm gonna fix this one day and try to like add some more material or beef this part up. So right now it kind of just locks in. It doesn't actually screw on. But again, I'd rather something fall off than be too tight and break. This part just screws onto the end right here. That's nice and tight. Now, one thing I want to comment on real quick is this gold right here, it's not 
meant to be handled and used too much. It's meant for decoration only. You can't put a clear coat on it. If you touch it and mess with it too much, it will start to lose its shine. You'll actually feel your fingers starting to get sticky. So use it for decoration. If you're gonna be handling it, if it's gonna be a cosplay prop, you're gonna have to experiment and use a different gold. But if you want it just to be on your wall and you want a nice ornate gold, this is probably one to go with. So this is the locking feature I was telling you guys about. So there's a hole here and then there's a little ax groove here. And the reason I fused this part together this actually sit, slips right through and fits in the back of the ax. And I had to do a little bit of trimming to get it to slide in there a lot better because obviously the paint built it up. And I already have the magnets installed there. They're ju they just have duct tape over them just to kind of keep them from popping out, but it works. So this slides in there and then you'll see the ax head kind of fit right down there. So already that's sitting in there and that's, uh, oh, that's already kind of a cool ax by itself, even without the hammer. And then you're gonna notice a little groove notch right there, it drops down. And that's where this little other ax core plate comes into play. And this slides into there. And once that's in there, the top will kind of lock into place. And I don't wanna drop this. So we're gonna hold it like that. And since I have the two, the magnets on this side and that side, and make sure you match the pole. If this is a method you do, make sure you match the poles up. You don't want to put this in there and then the magnets be you know, repelling each other. And then this little groove right here actually slides down and it's gonna lock the, the, the hammer head into place. And that's it. So now the ax head's together. It's a little, little wobbly and with enough playing around, this will start to slide out. But again, I wanted it to be removable. You can glue this into place and have it like that forever. But I just love how this thing goes together and it's strong enough to actually hold it out just fine. I just can't express how much I am in love with this thing. Even with its little imperfections, even with some of its layer lines, I am just so happy I made this. I'm so happy I went with this design that I found this model. Now, I think you can find some free models online. I think there's one on Thingiverse with this type of uh, handle, but it just, this one was worth the money. I think it's 20 or 30 bucks. And like I said, it gives you the options to print uh, the Groot handle. And with this whole locking system and features, you can actually swap it out and have both handles if you want. But you know what? Why not just print both and have two really, really cool Stormbreakers just you know, on display in your house? The, the original Stormbreaker and then you know the modified version with the original concept art handle. So guys, that pretty much does it for this video. This thing was an absolute blast to make. If you're on the fence about it, uh, definitely make one. I planned on originally kind of making this bit by bit, piece by piece. I printed this like a month ago and I said to myself, as I have extra filament, I'll pop out a part, call it a day. Then my CR-10 Max came in and I printed off the ax head. And once this came out, it just looked absolutely beautiful and I started to fall in love with this thing. And I'm like, it's go time, let's print this thing. This was printed in 100% Sunlu PLA Plus. Um, I had no issues with printing. It was all done with stock Cura settings, Cura 4.6.1. Um, didn't really modify anything. I believe I used mostly a 10% gyroid infill for the handle, and then I used something like a 5% gyroid for the ax head, for the ax head and the hammer head, just to kind of give it a different weight distribution. I wanted the handle nice and strong. You can do 100% infill if you wanted. I don't really see the point of that because you can hold it out just fine with that metal rod, and there's absolutely no issues. I don't think I'd hold it here, but we're not going to put that to the test right now. If you guys have any questions about anything I you know, showed but you want to know more details about, uh, please you know, drop a comment, message me on Instagram. I will talk your ear off about this thing. This is just, just holding it. Like I could literally just stand here in the video and just mess with this thing. You can see me playing around with it, fidgeting with it. Um, so I'm going to try to keep this here while we do this little outro. Thank you so much for watching and I really appreciate everything you guys have been doing for me. Um, if you guys are you know, interested in anything on the channel, you want to know more, printers, filament, files, settings, again, drop a comment. If you guys haven't already, please, if you could subscribe, that'd be great. I want to keep putting out videos like this. There's just so many things and prints I want to review. If you guys like this style video where I kind of explain it to you how I made it in a little bit more of a summary version like this, instead of taking you through step by step by step, please let me know. I do, again, really enjoy making this type of, these type of videos and I have tons more planned. I have a lot of projects going on right now and I have a lot more planned in the future that hopefully are gonna be even cooler than this thing. So please stay tuned for that. Thank you for everything and have a good day.